Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to my review of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Now, uh, before I get into this review, uh, I got an additional uh, item to add to my collection. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I reviewed the... Um, I'm, I reviewed. <laughs> I revealed that I got an uh, an additional item. It is the Captain America Worthy Funko Pop, and um, you know I don't really I don't really do those. Uh, but I, I saw that one. I absolutely had to get it. I just saw another one that uh, I had to get it because uh I mean let's hey my childhood like on oh, that's that's the best way to put it right there. So it um it's definitely a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be, but I'm very excited about that. So. Uh, Basically, without further ado, do we have uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Megazord? That's right, we got the Megazord. Like going, I'm I'm really excited about this because it's awesome looking, and um, like going, it's oh, there we go. It's uh, it's something that um, I just I couldn't pass it up because I mean it's it's the Power Rangers, it's the it's the Megazord, it's the original Dino Megazord. Like going, it's so. It's so awesome. It glows in the dark, and um, I think that's going to be something to add to my collection. Uh, I actually intend to, where the fan is back there, uh, I actually I got a new entertainment center uh, that I need to set up, and I have not done that yet. Um, and that's, I, I hate to say it, I wouldn't love to blame it on laziness, but it's uh, it's more on, uh, you know, uh, based on being super busy, um, just doing this and uh, doing, you know, the work in the gym and all that stuff and, and, and trying to have a social life, you know, barely, um, you know, so I have not set that up yet, but like on my, my previous entertainment center, I'll actually go back there where the fan is and I'll put, uh, I'll start putting some stuff on it anyway, but let's, uh, let's move on to the rise of Skywalker. I'm going to say this initially, and then uh, I'm going to probably going to, I actually have, um, I was actually given a copy of the movie that was actually it was a promotional copy and I'm gonna go through that step by step now I have seen the rise of Skywalker twice so it's not like I'm just bootlegging you know stuff off the internet and and um, and, and shortchanging um, you know Lucasfilm and Disney because I I'm not about that um, if I believe in in, in, a, in a movie franchise I will shell out the money to go see it and that, that is very apparent with the Marvel Cinematic Universe I saw Infinity War six times in theaters, and I saw Endgame six times in theaters, and that's no joke. That's 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 serious. So I have seen The Rise of Skywalker twice, and I have to be honest, I may go see it one more time. Um, I am off New Year's Day, and I'm also off the following day, and I may go see it again because, you know, I did really enjoy it. I, I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, I did have some issues with it. Um, there were some stuff that I was like, uh, you know, I was like, mm. but it, it wasn't anything that was highly detrimental. The last Jedi left a bad taste in my mouth because it treated the original characters, I think, very poorly. Um, and, and in my opinion, it also treated the, um, the sequel trilogy characters kind of poorly too. I think it, it made them almost kind of hollow and, um. I don't know, almost like a shell of what they were in The Force Awakens. I really got behind those characters. I really, really liked, well, I still really like. Um, I At that point, I had really liked Rey. I really liked Finn, and I really liked Poe. And, uh, you know, the, the chemistry between John Boyega and Daisy Ridley was phenomenal. And the chemistry between um, John Boyega and um, Oscar Isaac was really phenomenal. And I really like those, and even the interactions they had with, uh, you know, Harrison Ford in the movie and Carrie Fisher, like going, you know, I, I really enjoyed John Boyega and, and, and Harrison Ford's kind of sarcastic tones off of each other is really a lot of fun because, you know, um, w one part I can remember right off the top of my head is like going when, um, when Han Solo is trying to, to tell um, Finn, like going that, that Ray is like climbing up the side of Starkiller base, like behind him, he's like... He's like nodding at him, and he's like, he's like, he's like, why do you keep doing that? Why, why, why are you doing that? Like, oh, and he's like, I'm trying to tell you something. Why, why, why are you doing that? Like, oh, and I love the sarcasm behind it. He's like, going, oh, he's like behind you, and I don't know. That made, really made me laugh. It was a lot of fun to it. So, I, I, I feel like the Last Jedi really lacked a lot of those in, in, interactions, and it was, um, it was just kind of a 
downer of a movie. I don't remember a lot of scenes in that movie that were funny. That even they even had like sarcastic humor to them. I just feel like it would just. I feel like it brought all the characters down. And uh, I still own it. I still like it because it is a Star Wars movie. But I I think it's barely a Star Wars movie. The the cinematics are great. The the fight scene is great. I love the fight scene with Kylo Ren and the uh, in the the elite guards. I can't remember the the Pra- Praetorians. Thank you. Um, the Praetorians. I really like that because um, you know, uh, I like the fact that they Kylo Ren kind of killed Snoke. I I, I like the way he did that, and I thought he was actually going to turn good at the time. Um. I also like the fact that the little cliffhanger were like going, the lights kind of flicker, flickered under Snoke's body, and I thought, ah, oh, he's not dead. He's not dead. There's no way. I'm like going, this is Darth Plagueis the Wise or, or some. I'm like going, there's, there's, he's not dead. There's no way. And I, I feel like the lack of leadership at Lucasfilm is, um, is the reason the sequel trilogy struggled so much in a lot of, in a lot of areas. And that's on Kathleen Kennedy. And, um, I think going forward, I think uh, I think Kathleen Kennedy should resign because it was not fair that J.J. Abrams had to scramble and uh, and try to to save the damage done by the Last Jedi and uh, and scramble to to end the saga as best as he could. And I think that's what he did. He he ended it as best he could with the material he had been given because he did make up, in my opinion for a lot of the scathing problems of the last Jedi. So, um, with that being said, I will, I will actually kind of go through this and kind of discuss some of the stuff that I had issues with. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to turn the volume way down just so, um, I don't maybe get in trouble with Disney. And, um, so, okay. Y'all can probably still kind of hear that. So we're going to turn down even more. So, and all right, so we're, we're going to get through the main crawl here. So I really liked, um, I really liked the, the hunt and, uh, for the, uh, the Sith wayfinder. I really, I really did like that. I kind of, um. Because, you know, Star Wars is, um, has a lot of, uh, a lot of hunts for like, you know, magical items and stuff like that. Even, even in the expanded universe, like with Knights of the Old Republic, you have to find like these magical items and stuff and you're doing a lot of, you know, I do kind of like that they brought the Emperor back and kind of made it to where it was all his manipulative plan and, um, that he was, um, to put it, he's like, my boy, I've been every voice inside your head. And like in his voice changes. I really like that. So is it perfect? No, it's, it, it, it's not perfect. Um, I know, I know some people had, uh, had issues with, um, with some of the stuff with Ray in this movie because she's been called, um, uh, Mary Sue, um, I can kind of get with that and I'm kind of against it at the same time. And, uh, I like the fact that they showed her training with Leia and, um, a lot of people were like, going, oh, they, they took issue with the fact that, uh, she's literally seen in the movie and I'm at the scene right now to where she's training. She's, she's meditating. She's levitating above the ground in the air. And, um, she has the rocks rotating around her and two orbits. Um, I don't have an issue with this because I played Knights of the Old Republic and it is my favorite Star Wars. It's my, probably my favorite game of all time is Knights of the Old Republic. Revan did this after he had had his memory wiped from the Jedi Council. And he um, he learned to to tap into his powers again, tap into the Force again as a Jedi instead of as, as a Sith. And um, he... Uh, you know, he was sitting there meditating, levitating in the air with two chairs rotating around him above the ground. Like, going, so this is not anything that's new. Like, going, Revan was a very powerful Jedi. Like, going, so obviously Rey is a very powerful Jedi as well. Now, we're not saying that she's the most powerful Jedi ever. Like, going, I think that'd be an extremely bold and odd statement. So, I like the fact that they showed that training. They showed her 
with um with the helmet on the mask on and uh they showed her actually basically uh you know with the, the training droid the training orb and stuff like that with the mask down so she couldn't see like going she's doing stuff but I also like the fact that they showed her kind of reckless in this movie, too. Kind of like Anakin Skywalker from The Clone Wars. Like, going, she was, uh, she's still training and learning to try not to tap into that passion and that anger. And uh, I like that. That um, it, it gets a little muddy. Now, now that I'm moving forward uh, in, in the movie, the scenes with Carrie Fisher the deleted scenes from i believe the force awakens um maybe even a, a, some from the last jedi i don't know i don't know where they got the deleted scene from i i i did scrutinize i i scrutinized this movie more than i probably have any star wars movie ever um because i have a i have a buddy who who was um who's not very keen on it he absolutely loathes the last jedi and um you know not in an indiscriminate amount, but he really feels like it just, it really took, um, kind of gave the big, big middle finger to the fans. And in a sense, I don't think he's a hundred percent wrong. Uh, so anyway, I went in, I went in really kind of analyzing this and, um, you know, to kind of give an honest review. So the scenes with, with, uh, Carrie Fisher's, um, you know, st- uh, stock footage, I guess, is um, they weren't as bad as I thought. I think they they did the best they could trying to write around that, the dialogue around that. There's a couple of scenes where it's like I'll say it's borderline and it doesn't fit a hundred percent, and it can get a little messy and a little kind of like. Mm. But I think they they did the best job they could. I know there are some people who thought that uh, they should have just. In between the movies, they should have stated that she had died and, and kind of, you know, paid homage that way. And I can understand that. It's the same time we got to almost pay homage in the theater while watching it. So I, I, don't, I don't think that was a bad route to go either. You, I can go either way on it. The point of the fact is, though, we got to say goodbye to, to both Carrie Fisher and Princess Leia. And yeah, and I, I think I was OK with that. So um, kind of moving forward here. You know, going, going, searching for the, the the wayfinder and stuff like that. Um, I know some people had issues with um, kind of the I guess the f- maybe you want to call them like the force wormholes or whatever. Like like when they could just like enter trade things through the force. It's a little hokey. Uh, I'll give it that. Definitely a little hokey. Is it something that really? It's kind of like. Um, there's been there's been a lot of hokey stuff even in the expanded universe it's like but i think because the it was the expanded universe nobody really paid it as much attention because it wasn't as mainstream you know like going you may have loved and, and and read this book or read that comic or played that game you know and then of course you loved it but then there's somebody else who didn't play that game and they didn't see this one thing you know, who they would have been like, you know, if they, you would have told them years down the road, like, oh, yeah, I played this game and they did this. And it's like, oh, he's like, oh, dude, they did that. Like, really? Like, that kind of is like, mm, I don't know. Uh, you know, so I think the fact that these movies are more mainstream is, is where they get a lot more scrutiny and a lot more nitpicking. So it, I can, I, I'm kind of middle of the road on those two. It's a little hokey. Yeah. Is it saying that they have this strong force bond to where they're, but they they did establish um, they did establish a connection in the past, at least the the previous movie to where there was a little bit of that to where Kylo was talking to her, and um she was on the island with Luke and the water splashed and he kind of got water on his hands so it's not like they just threw that in this movie so at least there's a little bit of a backstory there, even though it was in the Last Jedi and a lot of people don't like that so I mean it's not really. It's not really breaking the bank for me. Um, the fact that they brought brought Lando back and he him and Chewie hugged, I love that. Like that was so great. Um, it it brought you back to the, um, the I, I can't think of the city, but you know the cloud the the city in the clouds. Like going, I, I love that. Like going when in the Empire Strikes Back. Like going, he's I I just it was so good. So and and Billy D in my opinion is is still such a charismatic and he is Lando Calrissian like going is so great 
and I think the the actor that plays uh, Chewie now did such a good job because he studied under under Peter, and um, you know Peter lived that role. He is that role, like Owen, and and the fact that um, after the Force Awakens, you know he decided to to step down from that, and uh, so I I think that the I think the younger guy who did it, I think the fact that he lives, eat, and breathes Star Wars, and he, and he, he was re- it was really important to him to do a phenomenal job. I really love that moment. I think that was a great moment. Um, the speeder thing with the they fly now, eh, yeah. I didn't care for that because, like, on if you play Battlefront, there are rocket, uh, I believe there are jetpack troopers and, and, in that game, and so they fly there so it's not really anything new but i guess if you really wanted to stretch it for them even even finn to say they fly now that part is really it's so hokey it's almost souring to where i guess the other ones you could kind of like skip by it and say no well they may not know that they fly they may not have they not know that they have rocket troopers so but for finn not to know and i'm like uh, that one, but it's not going to break the movie. So it's not going to, I'm like, Oh God, or, you know, it's just, it's not that. So, you know, um, I know there are some people who had issues. The fact that, uh, that Rose was not in the movie as much. And she's been compared to kind of like the jar jar of the new, of the sequel trilogy. I didn't mind Jar Jar. Was he obnoxious? Absolutely. Um, did they? I think they overinflated Rose in the the Last Jedi. Absolutely. Like going on, she's she's a side character. Like going, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, she's a side character. I feel she interfered with Finn's story arc way too much, and it really kind of upset me because this is me personally, and I've I have a, I had a friend who adamantly disagreed. Adamantly. Um, she said that um, I, I think that they established the possible romance between Ray and Finn in the first movie, and she told me she highly disagreed. She said that she's like, I think Ray and Finn have been like best friends ever since the first movie, and I'm like, eh. Her and I can battle about that all day. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's up to you to make up your own mind. So I kind of feel like in in the Last Jedi, they they threw in this weird rose. Um, possible, I guess, for like infatuation with Finn, I didn't like. And I feel like it, it kind of cheapened both characters because, like, going, you know, Rose is. Finn was going to sacrifice his life to try to save everybody else. And even though I didn't want Finn to die, and I was really kind of almost upset, and like, really upset to see one of my favorite characters of the franchise, the, the new, the new movies, sacrifice himself, I understood why. And then when she blasted him out of the way in the last minute i'm like dude what like that just it literally took the moment from like being like a nine out of ten and it took it to like a two out of ten and i'm like you just cheapen the snot out of it it's it just it was, it, no it didn't work so um also i think they kind of tease they tease two things in in it when you know it's like going finn had something to tell ray the whole time and they said that, you know, Finn wanted to tell her that he, he felt like he was, he started to understand that he might be force sensitive. And I, and I think that's something they teased from the first movie. There are also people who, who think that, that, uh, <laughs> to, to put it, I mean, a little, a little brazenly that, um, you know, I heard somebody say that, you know, Finn wanted to tell Ray, Ray that he, he wanted to get down, um, that he, he had feelings for her. Like going in, and I think that's probably more where I, I, I landed on that. But I think Disney kind of left that up in there to kind of leave it to your imagination. So, I don't know. Um, moving forward to, yeah, here we go. Here's a here's some hokey stuff that people wouldn't like. Um, the Force Heal, it didn't bother me. I'm going to tell you that right now. Didn't bother me, didn't didn't turn me off from the movie didn't uh not even when baby yoda did it i know that that baby yoda they they put that in there and they put that out right before this movie to kind of lend credence to it if you look in the star wars expanded universe force heal is a thing and it's been a thing and it's where you take part of your life force 
and you transfer it in, you know, or you, you take, you take power from the force and use it to heal yourself or use it to heal somebody else. That's a thing. It's always been a thing. It's in, it's in the games. It's in Knights of the Old Republic. It's in Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords. And these are highly, highly acclaimed, beloved games in the franchise and um, games that are actually widely considered one of the best, if not the best Star Wars game ever. So I'm not really, I'm not really like going, you know, I'm not bucking at that. Like going, you know, if, if, if you've never really stepped out into the expanded universe, then yeah, you're going to go, what's up with that? But I have like going, so it, it, it doesn't bother me. So, uh, let's move forward here. You know, did I, did I feel they may be cheap in the moment with Chewy, like where he could have possibly done at the same time though? I don't know. I don't, I don't think they did because I, because like going where the moment ends, where it just ends and it goes to the next scene where we think Chewie died. And I was like, Oh, like going, I was like, Whoa, like when I actually give them credit for not immediately. Cause I think it took about a good 15, 20 minutes before they revealed that Chewie hadn't even died. So I think that gave the fans enough build up for that. I, I like Dio. I like the fact that it's a droid that stutters. He's like, he, he's like, no, 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 thank you. Like, oh, I mean, that's really like super cute and it's really kind of awesome. I really like the deal. Um, I don't, I don't know. I like the fact that he kept, he didn't want anybody to touch him. I really like that. Um, you know, so obviously, oh, what's her name? Carrie Fisher played her. Um, What's her name? Zori. Okay. Um, yeah, they called her the, the Star Wars Power Ranger. Okay. People had issues with Zori because at first she was trying to, to kill, uh, to kill Poe and she hated him. And then at the end of it, like, going oh, all of a sudden she loves him again. She gives him the medallion so they can get off the planet. And, um, you know, like, going oh, gave her the only thing that she needed to start a better life for herself. Well, if anybody's ever dated a, a woman and you've, you've hurt them or you've had to let them go because, you know, your lives are moving in different directions, there's a big chunk of them that kind of hates you for a while hates you a whole lot because it hurts like going oh, when two people who love each other and then all of a sudden one of them leaves and I'm assuming that Poe left because he was joining the resistance like going oh, so there's a lot of bad blood there and so but all of a sudden like going oh, being in his presence again brings up all those old feelings so and it, and it stirs all those feelings of the fact that she loved him so much like on oh, and that's why like all of a sudden like hot and cold um that didn't bother me like on oh, that's that's human mechanics like on oh, if if somebody hurts you and you love them wholeheartedly and you knew that they they loved you wholeheartedly but you guys had to split for whatever reason if like on oh, scars don't always heal and like on oh, and and they heal slowly so when that person comes back they hurt again but then you know it just so i mean that that's that's why the night and the day like on oh, she kind of looked like a Power Ranger. Yeah, she kind of she looked a lot like a Power Ranger. Um, so her appearance, eh, you know, the fact that they had to wipe three PO's memory, I kind of liked. Um, I almost kind of wish that. Um, part of me almost wishes that they didn't reset his memory, but they did. Um, Babu Frick cracked me up he's like hey, hey like dude, he was funny babu frick was funny so he did cra babu frick did crack me up um when they're raiding uh kylo ren's the battle cruiser i like that i like the lightsaber fight i like the discussion and they're, they're learning about ray's parents that they they chose to be nobody but they weren't nobody I kind of like that. 
Um, some people, some people had issues with, uh, some people had issues with, um, you know, uh, uh, they, they had issues with, um, what is it? The, the traitor, the, the fact that, um, general Hux was the traitor and he's just like, he saved them all of a sudden. He's like, I'm the traitor. Like in that moment, like going, you're not really gonna, in the fact that like going, anybody heard, heard those blaster shots. You're not going to stand there and carry on a conversation You're like, oh, so guys, uh, yeah, the reason I did that was is because I'm actually the traitor and I and I, I want Kylo Ren to lose. Like, oh, it's it's not going to be that. If you really want to put yourself in that situation, like, oh, it's, you're going to have to, you know, make a instantaneous decision. Like, oh, and it's going to have to be quick. So I kind of understand why he's like, I'm the traitor. Like, oh, and it made sense to me. Like, oh, and you're not really going to. Ah, uh, here's another moment people didn't like. Yeah, the 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 the, the force flying wasn't really a fly, guys. Um, I'm I'm assuming when Ray jumps from the confrontation with Kylo Ren off of his uh his Imperial battle cruiser to um to the Millennium Falcon is uh and uh, Finn grabs Ray's hand. That looks like a force jump. Like their force jump is, you know, there is in all the Star Wars movies and all the game. I mean, just there's, it's a force jump. It doesn't kind of look like she's flying a little bit because she did it like kind of like that, you know, kind of a little more take off ish vertically. Yeah, but and not really force fly. I, um, the, yeah, the dagger, the magic MacGuffin or whatever people want to call it. And, you know, some people like that. Some people didn't. Oh, here's another one. Here's another thing that I heard people complain about. Uh, the fact that she's on the she's on the uh, Death Star and um, Vader's magic room where he, he he's keeping the the Sith Wayfinder magically opens to her. Well, if we want to assume that the dagger helps Ray find where it is, we would probably also assume that there is a type of m maybe magic force magic in place or even even something that's maybe more technologically advanced in place for the dagger and the door to realize that um you know to sense each other like a key so ray is literally standing within 10 feet of the door and it decides to open it's probably because she had the dagger on her it's probably the only reason it opened it's not like some people said well go you know she's um she's raised just all powerful and they give Ray or whatever she wants and the door just magically opened for her. And I'm like, I gotta be honest. I have a feeling it's probably cause she had the dagger dudes like on, let's pump the brakes a little bit. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, some of the stuff that they let Ray do is kind of like, eh, okay. Might've been a little much, but I don't think that's one of them. And I think that's really nitpicking where you shouldn't. So it's just my opinion. Some other people might have another opinion on it, and I and feel free to comment on this. It's gonna be a long video, guys. It's probably gonna be like an hour long video because I'm really, like I said, I I, I really scrutinize the the heck out of this movie because the Last Jedi left me f wanting a whole lot more, and so I didn't want this movie to be a repeat, and I really don't think it was. I think they really really tried hard to fix the wrongs that had happened. So I liked Dark Ray. I'm going to be honest, it was just a vision, and um, they fought each other barely, but I liked Dark Ray. Like, oh, and it reminds me when um, you, when you when you're playing Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords, and you go into Exar Kun's tomb, like going, um, you know, there's like these little hot spots of like dark magic power, and you see, um, I think it, that's in the tomb, you see a couple of visions. I, I kind of like that. That's in the EU. That's in the expanded universe. Like going, you can't nitpick at that. Like going, and the dark side warps you in ways. Like going, so the fact that like going, Ray like kind of like hissed at herself. Like going, had like this like evil face and like sharp fangs. Like on all her teeth, I kind of liked it. She had a double bladed lightsaber. I really liked that too, because at the end of the movie, when if you look into the the expanded universe at the end of the movie when she gets her makes her own lightsaber it's yellow a lot of people didn't like the yellow lightsaber i liked it it's the color of a jedi sentinel 
and ba Bastila Shan was a Jedi Sentinel, and guess what she had? She had a devil-bladed lightsaber. And so uh, a Jedi Sentinel is a balance between the Force and between a Jedi, uh, which is a Jedi Consular who focuses more on the Force, and a Jedi Guardian who focuses more on combat. So, and um, Bastila Shan was a, was a Jedi Sentinel who had a double-bladed lightsaber that was yellow. And I think that's and and that saber almost she turned on. If you look at the other end of the hilt, it almost looks like it could have been double sided. So it just makes me think that like on oh, Ray is definitely a Jedi Sentinel. That's what they were labeling it as because I think they're they're laying the groundwork for the expanded universe to open up for Knights of the Old Republic because they have said that they that the the next movies are going to take place. The majority of them in the in the old republic. So, I know Pipos. I'm doing something. I'm sorry, man. This this is gonna this is taking a longer than I thought. Um. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with Dark Ray, and uh, I, I like that Force Vision. It was brief, but it was there, and I liked it. Um, another thing I also really liked is um. I I liked how where they they kind of fixed the problem that um. They said Ray was overpowered and she she was just beating too many people like on and she she could do this and do that. Kylo Ren beat her to her knees like on he was getting ready to strike her down when Leia intervened and used all of her life force in the force to to erase the dark side from from Ben. He went from being Kylo to, to being Ben again and that's when. That's when Ray jumped up, grabbed his lightsaber, and stabbed him with it. And we could have almost let Ben die there, and he would have been redeemed. So I feel like maybe that kind of cheapened the moment a little bit, and I get that. But that, that moment does not bother me because Ray was not like all powerful in that moment. He was he had beat her literally to her knees. She was she literally one swipe and like she collapsed to her knees her light and like he was ready to swipe and she was like yeah it was i think that was a very dramatic moment and i kind of like that so if you have the chance to rewatch that pay, you know watch more closely um moving on to the next moment some people are kind of like uh she, you know she she healed ben but like going you know she she had realized in that moment she could sense that he was ben again he was not kylo he was not a sith lord he was he was ben so the force memory okay yeah i guess um i guess maybe you could just call it a memory or maybe even there was a little bit of force in, of the force involved you know maybe it was just solely ben's conscience about you know han solo came back that's why he wasn't blue because i guess he was just a memory i liked it because it replayed some of the old conversation they had in a for the force awakens when ben made the poor decision and, and stabbed his father and killed him. But it went very differently this time. And Ben ended up throwing his lightsaber into the into the ocean, his his dark lightsaber. And uh, I like that. So I think that was actually a, a really powerful moment to be honest. So um Oh yeah, here we go. Make it up for some of the nonsense of the last Jedi. Ray decides she's going to hide on the island, like like uh, Luke Skywalker did. She throw she burns the, uh, the the Tie Fighter, the Tie Interceptor, I believe it is. It's what it is uh, is an interceptor, and she throws she throws um, Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber, who was Luke Skywalker's first lightsaber, who was Ray's first lightsaber, and she throws it, and Luke Skywalker catches it. Says, "What are you doing?" That was a in your face, Ryan Johnson. You you chose poorly moment, and I love it because they're like going, "You do not do that." And then he even says too, he's like going, "I was wrong for hiding on the island in fear. I was wrong." And um, I think that was that was those two moments were very much an apology to fans saying we should not have done that, and we did. And um. So we're sorry for it. We're, we're trying to make up for it. And I like that. I think that was a. I like that. I like that they did that. I really do. I like the fact that they brought. 
I liked the fact that they showed Luke and Leia young together. I liked that Luke lifted the X wing finally out of the water. I uh, there's a, a lot of a lot of a lot of fan service, a lot of nostalgic moments, a lot of um. So, um, it was space horses. Yeah. Okay. So people, people were upset about space horses. Um, like, going, oh man, they're like, there's, they, they can breathe in space. The horses can breathe in space. Like going, I don't understand. Excuse me. They weren't in space. They were in Exegol's atmosphere. Like going, you can clearly see that they're still in the atmosphere. There's, there's, they're not space horses. I, mean, I, I guess they kind of are space horses because they're from another planet, but um, they aren't physically in the vacuum of space. Like, and so I don't have a problem with the fact that the humans don't have like you know suits on to breathe and the horses can breathe. Like, I don't have a problem with that because they were in the atmosphere, like still the planet, like going where all the star destroyers were, where the emperor was, where nobody needed a mass to breathe air. Like going, so that's 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 why. And I think people overlooked that, and some people, and I see, when I say people, some people, not everybody, you know, so, and but I just, I've heard a lot of these, bullet, a lot of the points I'm talking about are bullet points I've heard gripes about, and like, oh, I think that's minimal, like, on, they were still in the atmosphere of the planet. They weren't in the, even in the upper atmosphere, they were at the, like, you know, below cloud level, like, on, so, um, I apologize if you can hear my cat in the background, he's being a butthead. So... I kind of, I'm okay with the fact that Ray is a Palpatine. I'm okay with that. You know, um, here Ben's coming to, to help. What's going on? I'm kind of glad Ben did. Yeah, they traded the lightsabers, you know, through the force, like going, you know, behind the back, like going sleight of hand. Um, the Emperor figured out that they were, they were a, a dyad in the force, or I think that's what it was. Um, basically a unique connection i also like the fact that the emperor did drain life that is that is in knights of the old republic that it's a power you can get it's called uh you know it's um you can drain their life force take life from them to to for your life and he's draining their life like right in front of him i was like, I was like yes that is from the expanded universe that is a beautiful thing i um a lot of the stuff that they took, they, like they had to have taken from the expanded universe, like going, and it makes me think that Kathleen Kennedy is not involved, was not involved in this movie because there was no last Jedi moments, we'll say. And um, she also said she's like, well, it's really hard to write a Star Wars movie because there's not a lot of material, and it's like, um, I'm sorry, what? Like, have you been drinking? A little, little, little bit of the sauce, like going, you know, a little, little something. Like, what are you doing? Like, what do you mean? There's not a lot of, a lot of material. That's crazy. It's crazy. So, like, going, yes, I think they're vastly setting up a lot of material from the expanded universe, and I think Star Wars has a bright future ahead of it. Like going after this, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. So, Emperor's draining their life. Ah, uh, I, I loved it when I loved it when the whole entire galaxy showed up. Like on or the whole entire you you know universe whatever the hell you want to call it excuse my language, um you know when all the ships they're like going oh, it's not a it's not a navy it's just people like going oh, I'm like yes everybody's coming to save the galaxy I love it like that was that was a good moment that was a great moment um you know the emperor tr killing the last Skywalker. Uh, trying to throw Ben down the hole. I kind of like that. I knew Ben was not dead. I knew he was going to crawl out of the hole. Like going, um, there's just no way. But I like how he's like going, oh, I'm going to kill the last Skywalker. Like going, you know, I, I love that hatred coming out of him, you know, for the, and he even calls Ben the last Skywalker too. Like going, I really like that. Skywalker. I, I really like it. Um, so, dude, dude, the force lightning part where he's the force lightning part where he's just like shooting out of his fingers, like going, uh, the, like going, it just sounds like it's so intense. Um, 
and I like the fact that um, they said that like it was all this, all the Sith lords were in him, like going. So I kind of like that, like going because of all the, you know, all his minions in there. Because dude, his lair was creepy as you know, it was all get out. Like on that was some creepy stuff. That was a great Sith lair. Um, so I kind of like that. Um, when he started shocking all the ships, some people are like going, "Ah, eh, it's slightly hokey," but not if you have a thousand stiff you know thousand sith lords inside of you it's really not like oh and that's um i'd be like you know probably sh try to shoot a couple nuclear you know power plants you know the power from that into the sky like oh and so anyway um i guess that you know there was a thousand jedi in ray helping her fight um i'm okay with that moment like going because the previous Jedi before that had been wronged and their force ghosts now they're standing with her. I would have liked it more had they went into the sky and maybe um shown them. Maybe somehow in the stars kind of pop up and talk to her. Uh, I would have. I mean, but I guess maybe just the voices. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was. It left less to be scrutinized about. So maybe the voices was just best. I don't know. I'm kind of, I guess, iffy on that one. I will say this, when the Emperor shot the lightning at her, it kind of bothered me. She only held up one hand. She didn't really make it look like she was struggling. I feel like she should have made it look like she was struggling at first. And that's when she grabbed the other lightsaber and held it up to to, to deflect the, the rest of it back at him. I would have been okay with that. So, I feel like the acting on that one could have been better. A lot of people didn't like the fact that I guess the Emperor's Lightning was ultimately his own demise. But at the same time, though, Mace Windu had used that same trick to deform the Emperor's face. So, you know, it's like, I, I guess the point of the fact is, is that, um, like, going, had he let up the Lightning, she would have probably lurched forward and tried to swipe and kill him. And, I mean, so you can make the argument that he, that he didn't stop because he couldn't stop, just like he couldn't stop with Mace Windu. When he was doing it. And that's why the lightning deflected back and deformed him. So but this time his power was. He was so powerful that it actually stripped his body. And literally. Um, disintegrated him in, in front of the audience. Which is in a little bit of a gruesome fashion. Which I was okay with. But you know maybe for the kids. It would have been like going. I don't know. I don't have kids. So I don't know. Can't tell you on that one. Um, I like the fact that the. You know. Um. Ray dying, I get. Ray dying, I get. Because um, it took all the power out of her to, to try to just stop him. I feel like they used force heal too much, like, Owen, oh, because it felt like, you know, she had, you know, she had healed the snake. She Then she healed Ben. And then she, like, I feel like maybe it was too much. Maybe it should have only been, like, the one instance to where, um... Maybe instead of she stabbing Ben, I don't know. I mean, it's it's tough to tell. Um, you know, Ben, Ben saving her, I did like. You know, it, it showed he was truly redeemed. Um, I did not, and I cannot express to you how much I did not like them kissing. There didn't need to be romance at all in this movie. And if there was going to be romance in the movie, they should have stuck with somebody they actually had a, a previous longer relationship with, like Finn, because I said, in my opinion, they toyed with that slightly in the first movie, and then they just went away with it. And it's like, well, okay, so since you went away with that, just leave it alone. They did not need the kiss. Like, going, I guess they were trying to, like, play off the fact that she's like, well, I did want to take your hand, but I wanted to take Ben's hand. She could have hugged him or she could have took his hand and that I think that would have meant more. The kiss was just it was hokey. And I think that was I think they were pandering to the social justice crowd who had mostly liked Ray and Kylo Ren to where most normal most Star Wars fans did not. They felt that it would it was forced and I agree it was very forced and that kiss was very forced. And that was the only part of the movie. That I heard people grumble or kind of scoff at. It was kind of like, or like, just kind of like chuckle, like, ugh. 
because even even my my friend was like he kind of looked at me like dude and he's not really an avid star wars fan he's a, an avid marvel fan he knows about marvel like i know about the expanded star wars universe so i kind of we talked in the parking lot afterwards he, and even in the theater he kind of looked at me like dude the kiss really and i was like uh i was like Ugh, no so i feel like that cheapened their two characters and it cheapened ben's redemption and it cheapened the fact that he had saved her life like going she could have just taken his hand or gave him a hug like going like Welcome back. Oh, good lord, with the thing going off. Um, so, and then Ben just kind of drops dead. I felt like they could have did that better. He could have looked kind of like slowly, like just, I don't know. I feel like they could have, I'm not an actor. I just feel like the fact that he just went, I'm dead now. Like, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. So, I can be honest. I like the fact that they show the celebration in the end. Um, you know, I'll say this: there is um, the, there's goodness. Okay, I gotta I gotta turn this on mute. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, there's a LGBT um moment in the movie. I have zero problem with that. I have zero problem with that. It did um, it didn't. It didn't feel forced in the movie, in my opinion. It's a quick moment, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So I have, I have, say, a family member who is, and um, I have zero problem with that. Like going, so that moment did not bother me. And I haven't heard a lot of people gripe about that moment either. I think more of what I've heard lately about people griping about is that Disney removed it in the Singapore market because I guess um, they have really stringent laws. And I understand Disney wanted to adhere to those laws. Uh, but s uh, some people have also said, too, that, um, you know, if Disney really wanted to represent that they wouldn't have done that, they would have they would have taken that hit for the, you know, for the, the that community. I'm not here to judge that. I'm, I'm just saying in that moment in the movie did not bother me. Um, I have friends and in, in family that are. Uh, I'm not going to name any specifics because that's not my job to do. It's not my place to do. And I understand by knowing them, them, them that that's, that's not always an easy conversation to have with people who may not understand that so much. And um, so I'm not here to judge that. And we're not, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say the moment didn't bother me. Um, they were celebrating. It was perfectly fine. It, it went right in with a celebration. If, I'm, if I love somebody and you know, like going in love with somebody, and we're celebrating. I'm gonna kiss you. I'm probably gonna give you a big hug, and I'm gonna give you, then I'm gonna give you a big kiss. So, no, no problems. Hey, no problem, no problem. No, no problem, no problem. What is that off of? It's off of something. Here we go. I love the fact that she go. They go back to the this, you know, to Tatooine to Luke's home. This this Luke's uh, home. I love how she wraps up Luke and Leia's lightsaber almost to, almost as if she's burying them together, like going like you would to, two family members. You you would bury them together, like going so they they won't be disturbed. They can rest in peace. I like that. She, they she took very good care of their lightsaber. She took very good care in wrapping them, and and um. I think that, I think that was a very beautiful um extension of jj abrams and disney's decision to to show a lot of care for where the characters where that came from like on because like i said in the last jedi i feel like they were real reckless with a lot of characters so i really appreciate the fact that they did that and they they literally you know wrap them up as if they were wrapping you know what was left of that there what was earthly with that was left of them to honor and i think that that took them I think that was a really beautiful moment on on the part of this movie, and uh, so I'm okay with this moment. The Ray Skywalker moment, I'm okay with it because it shows Luke and Leia together and they're smiling at her and they're happy and they know it's over and Ray's going to live out her life and be.
and it's like it's like Luke and you know Luke and R two. It's it's Ray and BB eight. Like in the end, in the in the the Tatooine sun. I'm okay with that. It's paying homage to the the original trilogy, like going. It's it's nodding to that and saying yes, that was a beautiful moment. Like going, we love we love that moment. Paying homage is not a bad thing. It's you know it's not it's not cheap fan service. That's beautiful fan service. And the fact that she said I'm a Skywalker means that they respect that legacy so much that um, instead of being this like evil character that was like you know her technically is her last name the emperor being instead of saying oh you know i'm a palpatine and being like i'm so proud that i'm a palpatine like going dude people change their names all the time because like going because like going they don't know their parents or they don't they don't agree with the the life that you know maybe a parent has lived and they don't want to be that they don't want to be known for that so they change their last name like going I don't think that has anything to do with social justice nonsense. Like on oh, the fact that she says I'm Ray, I'm, I'm Ray Skywalker is like she's she's honoring the two people who are the most important to her, who are like almost like parents to her. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I see zero wrong with that. Like on oh, it, it 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 pays so much respect and homage to and the fact that she's standing in the Tatooine sun with BB-8 next to her, and and that's the end of it. I think the movie ended as best as it could. Like going, it made up for a lot of the issues of the 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 Last Jedi, and um, it paid a lot of homage to to the original trilogy and the original characters and what you know, journalists who are upset about it, like in critics, fan service. Well, guess what, dude? Fans are the ones or the reasons they're making this movie. It's not to to pander to your little, you know, your little movement. Like going, it's to pay homage to to Star Wars fans, all Star Wars fans. Like going, not just the ones that you approve of, and, you know, and approve of your message. Sorry, Chief. Like going, so it's um, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. There are people who don't like it and they have their reasons for that. That's fine too. Like going, but I have my reason why I like it because I see, I see a lot of love there and a lot of them saying this is a, this was, that was a beautiful thing and we want to pay homage to that beautiful thing. So the fact that she is respecting and paying homage to, to Luke and Leia who are like the parents that she never, the parents that she lost and never knew. I'm okay with it. I like it. I think it's a. I think it's a great movie. Um, is it without its problems? Absolutely not. It has its problems, and uh, I, I I discuss that. And that's why this is such a lengthy video. And um, you know, most people who might listen actually watch this are probably going to do so while they're at work and they're typing something or they're driving around, and it'll be like background music and you know background noise, and that's fine. Um, I loved it, and I think you, it, it um it was Disney's way of acknowledging, Hey, we heard you. We realized that like on what, what we did with the last movie was not the best. And uh, we wanted to make up for that. And I think they tried hard to make up for that. And I think we, they deserve credit for that. And um, I've heard a lot of people within the fandom menace, which I do follow um, say, Hey, we recognize that they tried to make up for that. They also recognize there are problems with this and they, there, there are issues that they may have with, you know, more than me, which is fine. That's their own personal opinion. No problem. Some of them liked the movie. Some of them didn't like the movie. Um, so, and, and that's, I feel, I want everybody to make up their own opinion. I want everybody to see the movie and make up their own mind. I'm not saying run out to the theater and see it now, you know, but don't, I don't think you have the right. Well, you have the right, but I think you would be ignorant to berate and downplay and talk bad about a movie you have not seen. Did the last movie was it was it not very good? It was not very good. And it rightfully has gotten criticism for 2 years for that. This movie has earned the right to be the uh, somewhat opposite. I mean, the majority of it in my opinion is the opposite. They they tried here. They tried to fix it. And they, they deserve credit for that. So I hope everybody takes that with them, you know, takes that into consideration when 
you decide to jump on these social media platforms and 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 go out there and just go well, I, I didn't like the last movie so I'm not going to like this movie. Well, that's not fair. Like going there's there's movies in the past I didn't like like going it's like going you know you know a couple of years later you watch it and you're like hey, you know what? I wasn't as bad as I remembered. You know, people can change their minds like going so I say give it a shot. If you're a Star Wars fan, give it a shot. If you don't want to give it a shot, that's on you. That's you. it's your money, it's your life, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you you're wrong for it. But if um if you don't go see the movie, I don't think you're you're entitled to be hypercritical of it unless you literally sat through it. And because I did the first time I sat through it, I I, I literally I'm like, oh, I, I like point my hand, but I was watching. And I was like, okay, mm, I, 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 I was all right with that. Okay, kind of. Little, little Tim Allen from Home Improvement there. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Um, I put my time in. I saw it twice. And um, I let it, you know, so put the time in, guys. It's worth it because, um, you know, I think I think the, the, the future for Star Wars in within the expanded universe that they've started branching out to is bright. And I think it's, it's going to be a good one. And I really, I really hope that, um, I really hope they buckle down and really do um, try to do a much better job this next time with the with the, the you know the old republic with, with knights of the old republic because the the knights of the old republic game could easily be broken into three movies into a trilogy and then knights of the old republic to the sith lords easily broken into three movies another trilogy and then what should have been knights of the old republic three easily the final trilogy like going easily you're talking about nine movies easily and, uh, and the Knights of the Old Republic stories are so good that they actually have been considered to rival the, um, you know, to be just as good and to rival the original, you know, the original saga. So I'm, I, I hope they do. Anyway, I, I have, um, this video went on a lot longer than I thought it was. Um, I hope everybody has a phenomenal evening. Y'all be safe out there and uh, may the force be with you. We'll see you next time.